This is the Nikon CoolScan 3, the third iteration of Nikon's dedicated film scanner. And if you found your way to this video, you might already know it includes a version of Nikon's digital ice technology, the infrared dust and scratch removal system that made CoolScan the leader in its class. I found mine for 80 US dollars, including the necessary SA20 automatic film strip adapter. It scans at 2700 DPI automatically, three to six images at a time. In most regards, this is an amazing tool for the at-home developer or those looking to save a little money scanning at home. Also, keep in mind, most later Nikon scanners come in well over $1,000. However, the LS30, unlike its younger siblings, does not use USB or the once popular Firewire to interface with your PC. It uses SCSI, which sadly negates all of the financial benefits of buying an LS30. Most people in the film community consider it a complicated paperweight until today. I did a lot of research on SCSI. I tried hundreds of setups in numerous combinations on numerous virtual machines, on Linux, on Windows 2000, on XP and Vista, etc. And it took me, I'm gonna say a while, but Eventually, I found, so far, the only setup that works for running a SCSI Nikon scanner without doing anything complicated or security compromising to the PC. And it continues to work. Over the cheapest USB SCSI adapter I could find on eBay. I got mine for just 90 US dollars, bringing in the grand total for this operation up to 170. Not including the copy of ViewScan we'll need to run the scanner for SCSI to USB reasons, but anyways. The directions are as follows. Using the Logitech LubSC USB adapter and the correct Windows XP drivers from the link in the description, do the following. Firstly, plug the scanner in, powered on. The adapter plugs into the port closest to the desk when the machine is upright. Note that the adapter and the scanner must both be uninstalled from the host machine's device manager, meaning no drivers can be installed on the LoveSC inside Windows 11. If any drivers are installed, it may cause severe instability issues with Windows 11 after closing the virtual machine. On the back of the cool scan, the correct sequence position is zero. Also make sure the termination switch is set to on. Second, an installation of 32-bit Windows 7 as a virtual machine must be performed with the VMware Workstation Pro software, which is free. VirtualBox will not work as it kept wiping the hardware ID of the USB devices I gave it. Connect a USB flash drive containing the drivers for the LoveSC, the Nikon Scan3 installation folder, which contains the drivers for the CoolScan in a folder named INF, and the ViewScan 32-bit installation EXE. Also, go ahead and virtually connect the LubSC USB SCSI adapter, which will appear as such in the Removable Devices tab of VMware. Then install the latest 32-bit version of ViewScan, which should preload your machine with the correct Nikon drivers automatically. If it fails to install them, we can use the Nikon Scan 3 folder as our backup option later. Next, the Windows XP driver for the LubSC can be installed on the device after which point an unknown mass storage device will appear on the device manager. Now install that same driver on the mass storage device directly from the LubSC driver folder. If you install from the Device Manager Driver Suggestions tab, it may crash Windows 7. The 
will then reappear as the storage controller Logitech Lub SC USB SCSI adapter. After that, the cool scan should appear in Device Manager as Nikon LS30. If it does not appear as Nikon CoolScan 3 or LS30, and does not accept the driver from ViewScan, or the Windows XP LS2000 folder found within the previously mentioned INF folder, you can install any generic imaging device driver on the CoolScan first to trick Windows into then letting it accept the proper driver from either of those sources. Once the driver is reported as functioning, you can run ViewScan and use it to scan your film. At the time of recording, it costs about $40 per year or around $100 for a permanent product key. Unfortunately, the Nikon scan software doesn't work when paired with a USB adapter, but this method is still the most affordable way to scan your film at home given you already possess some manner of Windows computer. I've so far had no malfunctions, no hiccups, I've scanned many rolls, and I've recreated this process on Windows 7 multiple times. It does appear the solution works, and it may work with other USB adapters should you be able to find the drivers. But for now, that's how you do it. A functioning and affordable SCSI film scanner over USB. Permanently plugged into my desktop, no tinkering required. All you have to do now is start Windows 7 by itself or within an easy to set up virtual machine and get scanning. If you'd like to see some of the scans I made with the LS30, you can check out my Instagram, at Spencer Falsey, or stay tuned for a video along those lines, and perhaps a film scanning, view scan tutorial in the near future. But for now, that's about it. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment about your experiences shooting film. Thanks for watching.